with, um, oh, I can't remember his name here, Nicholas Flamel, who, according to the legend, found the fountain of youth, the elixir of life, the philosopher's stone, partook of it, ate it or drank it somehow, mixed it in a potion, and swallowed it. And he's living, you know, five, six, seven hundred years, still alive. Okay? That's the idea that's being, th that, that all of these kids, that's the same spirit now that inspired the genetic scientists to go decode the human fetus genome. Are you with me? So the DNA energy drink, putting the embedded subliminal idea in people's minds that if I drink this, I will have the energy, I will have the superiority, I will have the power. Think about what's being told. Because especially this concept of alchemy where we're led humans, mortals, are turned into gold, the gods, by drinking the white gold. Was there any place in the Bible where somebody drank gold? Exodus 32. And it came to pass as soon as he came nigh into the camp that he saw the calf and the dancing. And Moses' anger waxed hot, and he cast the tables out of his hands and break them beneath the mount. And he took the calf, remember the calf was made out of gold, which they had made, and burned it in the fire, and ground it into what? Powder. Stop right here. I'm going to reach over here with my left hand because my right arm won't do it yet. Now I'm going to get out my copy of Morals and Dogma because Albert Pike mentions in here the Philosopher's Stone, the great work, the Grand Arcanum, and he calls it the Divine Powder. And he says in here that just one particle of the divine powder is enough to cure all of human ills and ailments. Spirits leading the way. He took the calf which he had made and burned it in the fire and ground it into powder and strode it upon the water and made the children of Israel drink of it. Think about it. He's making the children of Israel as a punishment for them rearing up a god of gold, a calf, a bull, a beast. Remember the bull, the, that's, that's an image of Baal. Here we have the calf, the god who is a beast, and they're worshiping it, and the judgment for worshiping this image of a beast is that they have to drink the God. And it's interesting that gold in the Bible is associated with a number. In fact, this number is rendered twice in the Bible and this is the only other place in the whole Bible that this number is, and I think I'm right here, I may be wrong, but I think this is one of the, one of the very few, there might be another one, I'm trying to think, but anyway, gold is associated with 1 Kings 10.14, now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was 603 score and six talents of gold. The Bible, the Bible is equating gold with a number and they drank the elixir with the God in it. Notice what else. Here we have another energy drink called the monster. The beast. Notice the O in the word monster. And of course, you know what a monster is. It's a beast. Okay, it's a it's a it's a beast rising up out of the sea. That's a monster. We have the O here that is the symbol of like the Masonic cross and crown. I want you to notice that that is the male and the female joined together. Uh, the sons of God mingling themselves with the daughters of men is literally what that implies here. But one of our astute watchers said, you know, Pastor Mike, you know, that it looks like uh, the, the letter M there. The letter M, by the way, is the number 13. It's the 13th letter in the English alphabet. So here we have the number 13, Revelation 13. We have uh, Acts chapter 13. We have Deuteronomy 13. We have Mystery Babylon the Great, the Mother of Harlots and Abominations of the Earth. That's 13. We have Anuit Coeptus, 13 letters. E Pluribus Unum, out of many comes one. 13 letters. But then it looks like claw marks, but it's not. It's actually a rendition of three Hebrew letters. That letter is the letter Vau. Okay? That letter is the sixth letter 
in the Hebrew Aleph Bet. So we have a rendering here in a monster energy drink of 666. This is all related to Mystery Babylon the Great. Remember the number 13. And notice her hand gesture here. She is holding two, three fingers up and two down. That is the hand of the mysteries. That is as above, so below. But by the way, this is Lady Gaga okay, with her hand deal doing that. Okay, and she is holding another cup in her hand. Revelation. In fact, let me let me go here. Let me read this right out right out of the right out of my top secret documents here that I have um, that I'm going to WikiLeak before you. And I want you to notice that um, in in uh, Revelation 17, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Um, she has she has a golden cup in her hands that she pours out to the earth and God uses her to pour out drunkenness to the earth to pour out drunkenness in the charismatic church to pour out contemplative prayer in the in the emerging churches to pour out a sense of apathy and even physical drunkenness God pours that out and the people of she's holding a cup that according to all of the legends was the legend of the holy grail that if you drank of this cup that you would become divine there's an institution that's been doing this now for 1,500 years, maybe longer. It's called the Roman Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic Church teaches in what's called transubstantiation. Roman Catholicism, notice the imagery here. We have the cup, we have the wine, we have an image of the sun god. That's not Jesus, but they say it's Jesus. Transubstantiation says the priest has the power to take this wafer and this cup, whatever's in this cup, and turn it, turn it literally into the God, Jesus Christ. So that when you eat the cookie and drink the nectar, you have God in you. When you were in Roman Catholics talk about I have received Christ, that means they ate the wafer. They drank the cup. That's what that means. They're not born again. They're just using the lingo. There's a popular pastor here in this area. I won't, I, I, I've met him once. I don't not want to judge him. But I think he needs to change his commercials. He has commercials on TV and he says, Receive Jesus. I, I think we need to tell people the truth. It's not just receiving Jesus. It's repenting of your sins and being born again. Having a born again nature inside of you. I encourage him. Go beyond what you're saying. But anyway, the whole idea of transubstantiation is that, that you, you are drinking the God and now you have the God inside of you. Now you have the divine nature. You, you have, uh, you have uh, turned the spark of divinity inside you into a full-blown God. That's what you've done. And that's what the Roman Catholic Church has been teaching everybody for 1,500 years. It's everywhere. I've even heard popular Christian leaders endorsing this idea of taking communion on a daily basis because if you do that one of them in particular one of them in particular who taught a lesson on taking communion and the bread he said I do it every day and it has produced marvelous things in my life that is works salvation and it's ritualism and it's a setup setting up people to drink the monster to have their DNA changed you remember the movie Indiana Jones and the Holy Grail? I want you to listen to, I've got a couple clips. I want you to listen to what's being said here about the Holy Grail, the elixir of life, the philosopher's stone, the drink that turns you into a god. I want you to hear what's being said about it in this movie. Take a listen. The Holy Grail, Dr. Jones. The chalice used by Christ during the Last Supper. The cup that caught his blood at the crucifixion and was entrusted to Joseph of Arimathea. The Arthur legend. I heard this bedtime story before. Eternal life, Dr. Jones. The gift of youth to whoever drinks from the grail. <laughs> now that's a bedtime story I'd like to wake up to. An old man's dream. Every man's dream, including your father's, I believe. Do you believe, Marcus? 